Welcome to the Grandstand, a seminar series tackling current yet gnarly issues from a variety of perspectives. Be part of a serious but relaxed exploration of topical subjects with healthy debate, discussion and reflection for all those who attend. I mean, I think we've trained people to think of planning as just the development of a plan. Um, it's not, it just, as, as Rod said, it keeps going and you keep have to reimagine and re-engage with the plan and the nature of a dynamic city is it's going to constantly change. So the, there is a natural human instinct to want to stop change. We want it in all our lives in all sorts of ways, but the nature of life and of cities and of any human experience is it changes all the time. And um, one thing I am keen to try and shift uh, our planning system from is this idea that we prepare a plan and then we deliver on it and then 20 years later we come back and do another plan and then we deliver on that and everyone gets horribly disillusioned and surprised when 20 years later we have to radically change things because the population's moved on. So the key is about ensuring that growth makes people's lives better. Now of course there's going to be localised, regional and wider um, variants of that over time um, and of course um, at an individual scale or a C scale or we're, we're going to make mistakes, we're going to get things really right, we're going to get things accidentally wrong and accidentally right um, but the nature is the processes need to include as many points of view as possible and as much detailed information as possible from technical experts as well as as well as people who live in, in places and understand those places over time uh, to, to make sure that we're making decisions on the basis of as much information as possible. But that's, that, that's got a level of complexity in it. It's, it's not all simple. I don't. Talking to public people about planning certainly doesn't have to be like that because what you need to elicit is what's important and they don't care. I mean, yes, Rod, people are attached to pl master plans but actually only planners care about master plans. People don't care about master plans. What they care about, I think, they're not, not even buildings. I mean, and you, that's the trouble with designers is what they'll do and envisioning is always going, okay, so here's my building. What do you think? And everyone's going, oh. Um, but what matters to, to the public mostly is space, is actually the nature of the streets and the parks and the squares and what, how those work and how they operate and how you can move around them and how they feel and the sort of vegetables and um, trees and so on. So, but I don't think it's very difficult to elicit the principles. And I think it's um, one of the uh, benefits of sortition is that um, people function better when they don't have a vested interest. So um, getting people to talk in principle terms, I think is more fruitful than getting them to talk about their own particular neighborhood, although obviously that needs to be able to happen as well. Um, because people know about their neighbourhoods, but but um, the investment is sometimes too extreme. Uh, and so you end up with a situation where the people are shouting and the government's not listening and then there's just no communication and then it, the whole, we end up where we are now. So, But I think it's, it, um, I'm attracted to the idea of random sortition because it takes a lot of the emotion out of it and it enables people to uh, articulate what matters in terms of principle and values and um, those sort of structural things up front of the process, which I think is really important. The idea of deliberative processes where an intelligent person is then given appropriate information becomes the essence of it. Um, so that, that, that sort of information and that sort of involvement will change according to the scale. Um, in fact, in many Anglo countries, planning has been at the forefront of increasing citizen participation in public policy general, generally. And so, getting to the local government question, you know, as designers and planners, we tend to focus on the place, right? The design, the, and, um, but what's been at the forefront of planning practice worldwide, and it's starting to happen here in Australia as well, is that the planners and designers are also designing and managing the processes and the organizations for planning not just the place them itself. And how is that done? Through greater participation. Why? Because the, um, I, I couldn't disagree with you more, Elizabeth. Um, 
I mean, actually, I do agree with you. Planning's, uh, or it's not rocket science. That's correct. It's much more complex. If you, if you can think of anything more complex than a city on this planet, please tell me. I'm arguing for a custom, you know, uh, there's no one method, there's no one rule, there's no one process, there's no, to take the d a design approach to the processes, not just the places, and to include the people. And the more people get involved in there participatively, not just reaction consultatively, in the design of the process and the place, the better outcomes you have. And I think you'll have that trust and transparency that clearly, I mean, this is a select audience, but clearly is the key issue. I think there's an incredible opportunity here and thanks to this forum and this organization that you know can bring it about, is that so there is concern about trust in government and you know these, these existing governments, local government, federal, state, but here we have a brand new opportunity, not literally to start from scratch, but almost with the Sydney Commission to really innovate, to do something new, different beyond the old models and really from scratch, really think about, I mean, I know a lot of that has been done, but it's an, a, uh, an arena for innovation that just, we're given this right now, what an opportunity. One of the, the, the when we're talking about a process, I mean, it's not a single process. So when we're talking about citizens' juries, I think it's about a decision or it's about a choice. And so where, from my perspective, where the design comes in, still hanging on to that previous profession, is, well, what are the imaginings about what the possible futures are, the variation, the range of possibilities that pertain in a particular place? That's what can then inform debate, I think, much more than having an open-ended question, should there be growth, should it be this or whatever, without it actually being founded on a set of clear alternative propositions. So when we're talking about this process, it's not simply a decision-making process that just floats and suddenly lands out of thin air. It is a decision-making process in relationship to a set of propositions or alternatives. And so that's that's. So when when we talk about designing the process, you can see that you know okay, there's two stages in that straight away, but there may be a whole sequence of steps in designing the process to get to the point where then the ultimate, to get the, to get the trust in the citizens' jury, an agreement even to what the alternatives are, to get it to a point where there's a standing back and there's some level of dispassion, is part of that design of that process. So I don't think anyone's suggesting that the citizens' jury is the be-all and end-all. It's founded on a range of alternative um, processes that lead up to it. The citizen jury model is a terrific model. Um, I think one of the things we're looking to do in, uh, in the legislative updates to the Act that we're going to put out on uh, an exposure draft later on this year um, is this idea of the Public Participation Charter, trying to get that idea through the Parliament again and giving the councils the first the responsibility to have to determine legislatively how they're going to consult with their community, but giving them the capacity to innovate with how they want to do it. Um, as in the legal system, juries are one method of engaging to get to a decision. Um, I'm a yes, social scientist, so mixed methods. There's going to be a whole range of different ways in which to get people to participate. Citizen juries are but one, and in the right context, they are incredibly powerful. And I'm really interested to see how the Geelong example works, um, because uh, I mean they've been tried in Canada Bay, City of Sydney, other county, Yura had had a go. So we know it works. Um, uh, it all depends on the questions you're asking, and uh, and. Uh, and, uh, and also on, on the people being uh, engaged, being informed.